Pozdravljeni vodaji, teden v EU. Evropska unija je prehodila dolgo pot. Zdaj imamo 28 držav članic. Če želimo v miru živeti skupaj, moramo sprejeti druge take kot so. Glede na nedavne dogodke, s katerimi se Evropska unija trenutno soča, je to zelo težko. A kljub vsemu ima Evropska unija slogan Združeni v različnosti in k temu stremimo vsi. Vsi uporabljamo elektronske naprave, kot so mobilniki. Ampak odkot so surovine, iz katerih so narejeni? Tin, Wolfram, Tantal in Zlato so štirje najbolj znani konfliktni minerali, znani pod skupnim imenom 3TG. Njihovo rodarjenje povzroča negotovost in zlorabe človekovih pravic v mnogih območjih. Oboržene skupine se spopadajo zaradi nezakonite trgovine z njimi. Proizvajalec Fairphone se obvezuje, da so minerali v njegovih oskrbovalnih varigah pridobljeni zakonito. Evropski parlament se zauzema za večjo preglednost v oskrbovalnih varigah prek obveznih sistemov potrebne skrbnosti OECD. They are called 3TNG for tin, tantalum, tungsten and gold. They are widely used in our mobile phones and many other high-tech products. But these four minerals have a darker side. In several regions of the world, conflicts between armed groups involved in their illegal trade are a major cause of insecurity, poverty and human rights abuses. For the European Parliament, it's high time for action. The legitimate that the European Parliament has as a very important goal to break the link between the trade of minerals which are very important for our industries and the financing of conflict and degradation of human beings. Nous devons absolument mettre en place des réglementations qui nous garantissent que les produits que nous consommons sont des produits qui n'ont pas été complices de ces conflits dans les pays d'origine. As long ago as 2014, a voluntary due diligence system was proposed by the Commission to encourage larger European manufacturers to avoid conflict minerals. What has happened since then? The initial proposal of the European Commission was a little bit modest, so we had to step up with this proposal. Ce qui a été obtenu, c'est que les entreprises dites du upstream, donc c'est-à-dire en amont de la chaîne, soient dans l'obligation de rentrer dans la due diligence. This means smelters and refiners, but also it means importers of minerals and metals. It's the upstream that we have to address because after the origins of the minerals cannot be recognized. Notre objectif est de faire en sorte que toute la chaîne soit propre et donc d'avoir un effet d'entraînement sur ce qu'on appelle le downstream, donc les entreprises de la fin de la chaîne, ce sont celles qui finalement vendent nos téléphones, nos tablettes et autres. Can the strategy succeed? What are the effects on the ground? To get answers, we visited a company that decided to apply the due diligence guidelines a few years ago. Fairphone started as a campaign around conflict minerals and we decided to make our own products to be able to address the issues that we saw happening in industry. At a time when many manufacturers were simply boycotting the regions affected by conflict, the company chose a radically different approach. In those areas, a lot of people are very dependent on income from mining. It's a main part of their livelihoods, which is why we wanted to source from these areas and make this step to prove that it is possible to source from these areas in a more responsible way. It took years to set up certified supply chains. So what we do is that we engage with component manufacturers to understand the exact supply chain of a certain material. And that way we're able to trace it up to the refiner. On the ground, concrete and sustainable results have gradually emerged. You can see that a lot of the conflict actors have moved out of a lot of types of mining, which actually enables communities to earn that income again. Another crucial question concerns the criteria with which the industry will have to work. On a travaillé avec des éléments de référence qui ont été émis par l'OCDE, qui leur dit voilà les questions que vous devez vous poser si vous êtes effectivement producteur, consommateur des 3TG. There are also other areas of concern for an industry that considers it has already made a considerable effort. Our industry uh, was already doing due diligence programs on a voluntary basis. How exactly these schemes will be recognized? 
if they are OECD compatible, if they uh, are fit for the purpose, then the European Commission will recognize the schemes. The majority of the smelters are based in Asia and they're not obliged also to follow these rules. If they want to be able to supply to the European market, they will have to uh, certify. Ça veut pas dire qu'on va régler tous les problèmes euh, de l'Afrique avec cette réglementation, mais en tout cas si on peut contribuer à arrêter de financer des groupes armés qui violent, qui tuent, qui exploitent, eh bien je pense que l'Europe aura gagné en faisant du commerce de valeur. Neka tedna pred referendumom, ki naj bi otrdil po oblastila predsednika Erdogana, se napetosti med Turčijo in Evropsko unijo stopnjujejo. He has called the Germans and the Dutch Nazis. His officials have been banned from a number of European countries and he threatens to break a hard bargained migration deal. Weeks ahead of a referendum meant to bolster his powers, Turkey's president Erdogan is not making any new friends in Europe. With tensions running high, the European Parliament has asked once again to cut short negotiations with Turkey, which is still a candidate for membership in the EU. It's good that we condemn everything that is happening in Turkey, but at a certain moment, Mr. President of the Commission and Mr. President of the Council, let's be honest, let's freeze the accession negotiations now. Νομίζω ότι στο μυαλό πολλών Ευρωπαίων ηγετών αυτή η συζήτηση έχει πεθάνει εδώ και χρόνια. Δηλαδή η πιθανότητα ένταξη τη Τουρκία για μένα ήταν κλειστή εδώ και πάρα πολύ καιρό. With increasing alarm, the EU has watched as Erdogan used last year's attempted coup d'etat as an excuse to punish opponents and consolidate his presidential power. Though Turkey is Europe's fifth largest trade partner and the EU is Turkey's primary export market, Parliament has postponed discussing the enhancement of the customs union deal with Turkey. MEPs want to wait until after the referendum before deciding how to move forward. Odbor za razvoj Evropskega parlamenta želi pravila, ki bodo podjetja in podizvajalce prisilila k spoštovanju človekovih, delovskih in socialnih pravic njihovih tekstilnih delovcev. Who made your clothes? Modern day consumers are increasingly conscious about what they eat and drink, but what about what they wear? Que nosotros tengamos tiendas con ropas tremendamente baratas significa que el trabajador que ha estado confeccionando esa prenda eh, está cobrando muy poco y seguramente tenga muy poca seguridad laboral, seguramente esté en condiciones de semi-esclavitud, eh, seguramente no haya ningún tipo de seguridad en los locales donde trabajan. This 18-year-old was sewing clothes for brands such as Benetton, Mango or Primark when her factory in Bangladesh collapsed. She miraculously made it alive after 17 days buried in the rubble. The Rana Plaza disaster claimed more than 1,100 lives and went down in history as the worst accident of its kind, sparking many companies to promise better diligence. A promise that is not enough, some MEPs say. Y si no tenemos un marco obligatorio, vinculante y muy claro de cómo esas empresas tienen que comportarse, si lo dejamos a la voluntad de las empresas, nunca vamos a alcanzar el compromiso real de que se respeten todos los derechos humanos y laborales y sociales de los trabajadores. MEPs on the Development Committee want EU tariffs, labels for sustainable clothing and rules that force actors to be socially responsible, from the first weave down to the last stitch. Pomembno je, da se spomnimo, odkot prihajamo. Po tragedijah druge svetovne vojne je bila rimska pogodba ključen sporozum med šestimi državami, ki so povezovale njihove osode v Evropsko gospodarsko skupnost. Ob 60. obletnici njenega podpisa se spominjamo, kako je pogodba postavila temelje za Evropo in njene dosežke, ki jih brani Evropski parlament. By the end of the Second World War, Europe was in ruins. The productive capacity of many of its countries destroyed. From these ruins emerged a new project of collaboration. Signed in 1957, the Treaty of Rome would become the basis for Europe's reconstruction. Antonio Tajani, the President of the European Parliament, highlights the Treaty's key role in shaping the Europe we know today. Sono i risultati di 60 anni di pace, 60 anni di libertà, 
i giovani non si ricordano quanto hanno sofferto le famiglie europee a causa delle due guerre mondiali. Questo è un risultato straordinario, dobbiamo difenderlo, dobbiamo andare avanti, perché la libertà è una conquista che va difesa giorno per giorno. Earlier in 1951, six countries had created the European Coal and Steel Community to boost economic revival and help ensure lasting peace by creating a common market for these essential wartime commodities. Vigorously promoted by the French Foreign Minister Robert Schuman, the ECSC Treaty was signed in Paris by France, West Germany, Luxembourg, Belgium, the Netherlands and Italy. A wind of change swept over Europe. L'Europe ne se fera pas d'un coup, ni dans une construction d'ensemble. Elle se fera par des réalisations concrètes, créant d'abord une solidarité de fait. The decisive step towards European integration was taken 12 years after the end of the Second World War. On the 25th of March 1957, representatives of the same six countries met in Rome to sign the treaty establishing the European Economic Community, the legal cornerstone of the future European Union. The Treaty of Rome committed its signatories to the progressive abolishment of customs duties within the common market in order to stimulate free trade between them. It also established a single set of import duties for goods entering the common market from outside. Based on the free movement of goods, people, capital and services, the common market led to a sharp increase in commercial interactions, generating at least 2.75 million new jobs between 1992 and 2006. At the heart of Europe's economic revival in the 1960s and 70s was the Common Agricultural Policy, which devoted a large part of the EEC budget to putting an end to famine and stimulating economic growth. The Treaty of Rome also introduced specific programs of support for the poorest regions, designed to shield them from the adverse impacts of new competition, and laid the foundations for a social Europe, for instance, in the area of equal pay for women and men. The remarkable success of the common market saw other European countries queuing up to join. In the 60 years since the Treaty of Rome was signed, we have grown from 6 to 28 countries and from 180 million to over 500 million citizens. In 1992, the Maastricht Treaty replaced the European Economic Community by the European Union and further defined the scope of the Four Freedoms. The Schengen area removed internal borders, putting the finishing touches to the free movement of people and goods. In 2002, after a long economic integration process, the Euro was introduced as a common currency. More recently, the Union has taken on new responsibilities in the areas of foreign policy and security. Now, after 60 years of peace, Europe faces new challenges in the form of globalization and financial turmoil. Europe does not yet have all the answers, but many hope that this anniversary will provide an opportunity to rekindle the optimism of modern Europe's founding fathers. Noi siamo molto più di un mercato o di una moneta e proprio da qui dobbiamo ripartire. L'anniversario della firma dei trattati di Roma deve essere prima di tutto l'occasione per riavvicinare l'Europa ai cittadini. Dobbiamo dare risposte concrete su disoccupazione, soprattutto quella giovanile, terrorismo e immigrazione. Oggi più che mai abbiamo bisogno dell'unità europea. Certo, l'Unione va cambiata, ma non indebolita. Za pretekli teden bo to dovolj. Hvala za vašo pozornost, se vidimo prihodnjič.